I often get asked, how do you get clone a specific commit? The answer to that question is simple. You can't. Uh, with Git, you can clone an entire repository and all of its branches. You can clone a specific branch and all of its commits. You can clone a specific branch and limit the number of commits that you bring in, but you cannot git clone a specific commit. Now, having said that, you can use git reset and git clone or git branch and git clone, combine them in a unique way and create a result that is effectively the same as cloning a specific commit from the server. And that's what I wanna show you right now. I've got a GitHub repository here, rock, paper, scissors, and I wanna do a clone of this repository, but I wanna to go to a specific commit. Let's take a look at those 131 commits in this history. And out of those 131, there's one I really like. And it's the one where I create Rose. That's my mom's maiden name. Hi, my middle name. Um, and you notice that that is commit 76FC817. That's the commit ID. So how can I get that commit onto my local workstation? Well, the first thing we need to do is do a clone. That means clicking that beautiful green button on the landing page of this project, copying it and copying it hard, um, and then going over to, to Git and then doing a clone. So it's just a matter of Git clone. This is just gonna bring the repository down, but it's not going to bring down the specific commit that I want. This is gonna bring down the whole repository for me. And that didn't work, so Git clone paste and there we go it cloned in rock paper scissors and I can actually come over here and see it cloned and you can actually see Rita and Rose there and if I looked at my commit history you would notice that Rita was created after Rose so if I've got Rita well I'm not at the Rose commit so what do I do well I do see that Rose commit is 76FC817 so what I need to do is I need to copy that commit ID. Then I come over here to my git bash shell, all while keeping an eye on Rita over there, because if Rita's there, I'm not at the commit I want. So I'm gonna do a git reset, and I'm gonna do it hard. And I'm gonna paste in that commit ID. And when I click enter, keep your eye on the prize over there. Look what happens to Rita. Oh, well, I wasn't in rock paper scissors repository so that was anticlimactic but we can do that again here we go get reset hard eye on the prize boom rita is gone so essentially i have now reset my commit history back to that point in time i could do a git log you ever log a dog this is called git log a dog all decorate one line graph, A-D-O-G, and it'll give you a nice little graph display of your commit history. And you can see over here, where am I? Looks like I am at commit what? Seven, six, A-F, right there. That's where the head is. It is behind kind of where the original repository that we cloned is. Um, but that's where I am. I am behind the times and before Rita. So that is one way that you can go about doing a, a git clone of a specific branch, or at least reproducing that. Now, um, one of the reasons people do this is sometimes to reduce the amount of data that comes down. So maybe you could clone a specific branch. You could specify a depth. It might be only clone a certain number of commits. Um, so that might be other ways to get closer to this objective, depending on what your objective is. I'd love to read in the comments why you're doing this. Um, but there is a problem with this. And the problem with Git reset is that if you make changes and push back to the server, you're gonna have a messed up commit history that doesn't jive with the server because of that reset command. So sometimes a safer option, if you're gonna be pushing back to that same repository, is to use a git branch command. Now, let me get out of here, click Q, click Control L. I'm gonna do a git reset. I'm gonna do it hard again, because I just like doing a hard reset. And I'm gonna reset back to 
3AB3C6F. 3AB33. And that's the, the start of the repository. That's the original commit. Um, and you can see that brings back rows.txt and rita.txt. Rose was always there, rita.txt. Now, essentially, I'm at the same point that I was before in my commit history, right? I, uh, I'm now at the point where we did the clone, but I want to get back to that specific commit, 76FC817. So how do I do it? Well, what I can do is I can do a branch operation. So watch this, I'm gonna do a git branch. You gotta give it a name, so I'll call it the specific commit branch, I don't know. And then you paste in or type in, because for some reason my copy and paste skills need some serious work. And it was what, 76FC817 that we were going after. So I now create a, a branch that branches off at that specific commit. Now, if I look at my file system, Rita is still floating around. And that's because I'm actually still in the master branch. So I gotta switch over there. So get switch and say specific commit branch. And boom, there we are. We've now switched over and Rita is gone. Now, the thing is, the, the drawback to this strategy is you're creating an extra branch, which isn't a big deal. You can delete branches anytime that you want. Um, but with the git reset, everything happens on the same branch. Git reset messes up the commit history. This doesn't, but you gotta do a merge if you wanna get back into that original branch. So let me just touch Randy. That doesn't sound Christian. I'm gonna to touch Randy. That creates a file called randy.txt. I'm gonna do a git add, stage the file, and then do a git commit. Dash M added Randy. And git commit dash M. <laughs> Gotta put in quotes, added Randy. There we go, that makes a little bit more sense. And now, Let's see what happens if we git log a dog at this point in time. Git log all decorate one line graph. You're actually gonna see some interesting stuff here. And what you'll see is you'll see how we actually branched off at 76FC817. So that was the, the point where we created our branch. And now you can see the commit where we added Randy. And you can see that that commit is separate from the original branch that was cloned down that includes created Rita and update Jenkins three separate times. So you can see that we have definitely moved around branches. Um, and that's the, the idea. Now, the other thing that we would need to do if we wanted to do a, a merge and get everything up to, to date is I would have to specific commit branch is what it's named. I would have to do a git switch onto the master branch. And notice that Randy is not here anymore. Um, and now what I need to do is I need to do a git merge and I need to merge the specific commit branch into master. And now after I've done the merge, you can see, boom, over on the right hand side, Randy is now in the master branch as well. So if I now wanted to take this master branch and push it up to the server, I could, and it's not gonna have messed up any of the Git commit history. Let's go walk our dog again. And you can see that we end up with a, a nice merge point where everything comes together. We've got master and main at the same position. Um, even though we did do that dangerous git reset and played around with our git history, which is not something for the faint of heart. You're really not recommended to, to do that. So there you go. If anybody asks you, how do you git clone a specific commit? How do you git clone a single commit? You really can't. 
Um, but there are some strategies for accomplishing it. The clone and reset and the clone and the branch are just two of them. We could probably do a clone and rebase as well, throw that in there. Um, and if you got some other ideas, I'd love to hear it. So throw those into the comments. So anyways, if you enjoyed that tutorial, um, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I'm, I'm Cameron, I don't think I introduced myself. I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor in chief over at the serverside.com. Um, we got lots of great tutorials on Git, DevOps, Jenkins, Python, Java, Spring Boot, Agile, you name it. Um, if you're interested in uh, reading some of my writings, I wrote a book called Pickering of Springfield a little while ago, all about how the famous town of Springfield in The Simpsons is actually based on a small town in Ontario called Pickering. So pick that up. Also, I am a, a writer who's written a few books on Hibernate and JPA. So if you're interested in learning Hibernate, JPA, some cool Java stuff, Hibernate Made Easy is one of them. And also, I've been working with a contributor over on the server side named Darcy DeClute, scrumptious on Twitter. If you're on Twitter, she's got 300,000 followers. You may be one of them. She's written this, written this awesome Scrum Master Certification Guide. And if you're interested in Scrum, Agile, you want to learn more about it and maybe even get certified, I can't recommend this particular book enough. Anyways, all of those are available on Amazon and fine bookstores nearby. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter and follow my personal antics, uh, at Cameron MCNZ is my handle. And finally, like, why don't you subscribe on YouTube?